are going to start coming in, but I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Michael. And um, Michael is going to kind of get us started and introduce our speaker today. Great, great. Thank you, Nahida. Appreciate it. Well, welcome everyone once again. It's fun to see where everyone's calling in from uh, around the U.S. And I don't know if there's any international. Sometimes there are, but I haven't seen any yet. Um, well, greetings and welcome to uh, Orange County Chapter of the International Coaching Federation. So on behalf of the board and Nahid and myself, we would like to welcome you to today's event. Um, in the chat, as Nahid mentioned, please uh, place your questions in the chat and we'll be monitoring the chat throughout uh, Carmen's presentation today. Um, my name is Michael Coffey, Nahid is co-hosting with me today and we are on the programming te uh, team uh, for our chapter. And we're so happy to have you all with us today. So a few bits of housekeeping I wanna let you know. Um, if you have any questions, as I said, I'll say it one more time, please put them in the chat and we'll monitor those questions and we'll get to them at appropriate times throughout the, um, the presentation today. I would also like to remind you that today's event uh, is being recorded. So uh, just to make you aware of that, it is being recorded today. Today's webinar is titled The Power of Resilience and our presenter today is Carmen Acton. And Carmen is a certified executive coach with over 20 years of experience as an HR professional, leadership consultant, and strategic business partner. Uh, Carmen has partnered with over a thousand corporate leaders at all levels and with diverse teams. She comes to us uh, from a, a blue collar immigrant family and has a passion for learning and helping others. She has experienced the pain of being dismissed, blocked, and patronized as well as the exhilaration of being seen, valued, and sought out. She believes everyone has the innate capability to overcome obstacles and accomplish extraordinary things. Uh, I, have got, I have had such a pleasure getting to know Carmen over this uh, time, and I'm excited for all of you to hear from her today and, uh, and looking forward to what we have to learn. So Carmen, welcome, and it's, uh, it's all yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so excited to be here today, and it's it's a learning experience for me uh, to only be able to see myself. So it's just a different experience, but I welcome everyone, and I'm sure that the wisdom in the room will populate and really help us all learn more about the topic of resilience. It's interesting because when I think about resilience, um, I often thought of my life was going down a certain trajectory and all of a sudden I would not get the job that I really wanted or something small would happen like my dog would eat the tennis ball, the entire tennis ball. And it was like, oh no, a setback, a challenge, something kind of getting in my way that I needed to figure out how to navigate around. So I'm curious in chat, what are some examples of setbacks or challenges that you have experienced so that, that we can kind of come together in this environment to get an idea of, of what that's been? And I'm going to help out here by reading some things that come up in the chat when they come. So uh, job loss, COVID-19, death in the family. I know that's really hard. I was thinking about all those people that had death from COVID, but they couldn't go into the hospital to say the last goodbye. And that breaks my heart. Pet loss, foreclosure, bankruptcy, daughter's divorce, my own illness, getting furloughed, loss of a client, client contract. September 11th, heartbreak, health issues, taking what I thought would be my dream job only to realize the organization was toxic, health concerns, a cheating lover. Wow, that's a lot of stuff, guys. Wow, yeah, and big stuff, right? Boss. Really, really big stuff. So as we um, kind of explore together today, what I'd like you to do is a couple things. One is, if you got the cheat sheet, and um, I think Michael's dropping it in the chat in the event you did not, there's a little Here, I just dropped worksheet. something in the chat, and I believe that's the cheat sheet. Okay, <laughs> you didn't perfect. get it. So, so as you go through, that's a, a resource for you to use to jot down any thoughts or tips, anything that comes to mind. It's also 
um, an opportunity for you to think about as we are exploring resilience, what are the one or two nuggets or actions that you might want to take so that you walk away with a personal plan for yourself on how to continue to build your resilience, how to continue to strengthen it, et cetera. So what I'd like to do is we'll go to our first poll question. And Nahid, if you could drop the poll or put up the poll, we'll see if how that works. Okay. So from your perspective, what is the definition of resilience, that one? That's the one. All right, here we go. And tell me when it's you've got enough there to close it. Uh, let's see, we've got 93%. Should I close it? Let's go ahead and close it. You want me to share the results with everyone? Yes, please. Okay. Can you all see? All of the above is 53% ability to bounce back and grow from challenges or stressors. 43%. Excellent. Thank you. And it's so interesting to really realize that there are different perspectives with regards to what the definition of resilience is. And this is one that I like to use because um, it tends to be in most of the literature. And the, the add-in is really around the ability to remain calm and in control and bounce back from challenges or setbacks. It doesn't necessarily mean that in the moment you're calm and in control, but you have access to that ability. Why is, why is it important to you to have a sense of resilience? So just jot some thoughts in chat so that we can see why is this important to you? And Michael, can you read the chat? I'm trying to see if I can get this document to everybody. Yes, absolutely. Um, some of the reasons why it's important, um, critical to meeting goals, the ability to cope and manage stress, um, stay in the higher brain, stay in higher brain, uh, keeps me moving and growing um, because there will always be setbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, provides hope, it helps you view options. Um, it's because I, I want to be able to respond well to life's inevitable challenges and it cre uh, increases opportunity to experience joy and progress, uh, live lovely. a better life. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. And, and to stay uh, forward moving. So beautiful um, reflections there. So on this particular one, this is another poll. So if Nahid, if you could put up the second poll, this will give us, this is the tool, one of the tools that we sent out, and it probably looks very familiar to some of you from the perspective of the life wheel, right? So I took a tool that's very common for us as coaches and adapted it to the primary domains that represent resilience. So what I'd like to do is just run the poll to see where is the area, what is the area that participants today um, might want to strengthen. And obviously you're gonna have different definitions for each of these areas, but go with whatever the definition is for you and we'll explore each of these areas. I love watching people fill out the poll. It's really cool. <laughs> I can't see anything on this side. It's pretty funny. I can see okay, the poll. Well, um, <laughs> I, we've got 20 of 33, so keep responding, people. And when we get to almost everybody, I will close the poll and share it with all of you. Meanwhile, I do want to let you know that for some reason, uh, the link that I gave you, um, it requires access. 
So then I tried to download the file and paste it in the chat and I couldn't paste the, the file in the chat, but what the file was, was a picture of this resilience wheel. So one thing you might wanna do is take a screenshot of it for now, and then I'll make sure that you get the file when we send out the evaluations afterwards. So you'll for sure get it and get to play with it. Um, okay, we had 87% of you, just maybe a couple more, put your votes in and then we will end the polling in just a few seconds. Nahid, also to everyone who's attending, just to remind you, the um, the the two documents that Carmen's sharing with us today were uh, included with the um, reminder today that was sent out with the link. Oh, look at this, lovely. So an area that you might want to strengthen, 45% uh, chose self-care, 3% active problem solving, 13% emotional awareness, meaning and purpose, similar and on down. That's lovely. Okay. Okay. So we are going to jump into all of these domains, um, including on the, the um, poll, we had other, and I actually use adaptability as, as the last domain there, but sometimes clients have um, different ideas. And so I, I quite frequently will just use other. So if you use this particular tool, uh, working with your clients, feel free to modify it to your own heart's desire. Okay, so when we jump in here, one thing I do want to emphasize is it's natural to experience a broad spectrum of emotions with the uncertainty that comes along with significant change. And, and when you were contributing earlier, most of that change was really significant, right? So it is natural to experience a broad spectrum of emotions. What we want to do is, let me move this. Focus on taking care of yourself. So again, in chat, what's one or two key areas that come to mind when you think about taking care of yourself? Getting enough, Getting sleep. enough sleep. Yep. Nutrition, time Nutrition. for reflection. Yep. Working out, meditation, slowing down, mental fitness. Exercise, exercise, time with friends, energy management, paying attention to my needs, physical, emotional, mental. Exercise instead of ruminating. Prayer, day spa, not judging, health boundaries with other people. So wide, wide spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to jump into a couple of these very specifically. So first is around nutrition. I see health boundaries with other people, but I also saw a big piece around um, nutrition. And really one of the big things there is that when we are um, feeling a bit stressed or overwhelmed, quite often we will default to comfort food. We might, overdo it on sugar or carbs or alcohol, caffeine. And our brain really needs to have healthy food, um, protein, good carbs, you know, healthy fat and lots of water in order for it to really replenish itself. So, you, so our nutritional needs and what we reach for is really an important consideration of how we take care of ourselves or how we practice self-care. Um, the another one that you mentioned is exercise, right? So exercise is the whole spectrum of how we take care of making sure that we are getting some form of physical exercise. It might be walking, running. Um, including taking some mental breaks. There's, there's literature, again, 
on the importance of trying to get 20 to 30 minutes of exercise every day. And, and literally it can be a couple, couple short walks and doing it two to three hours before you are going to bed. So there's there, that has an impact on your sleep if you do it too close to when you're actually going to bed. The other piece is around sleep, right? So Nahid, if you could put up, I've got one other poll specifically on this because I'm gonna dive into this in a little bit more detail. But let's take a look okay. at the poll first. Ah, let me find it. Uh, I don't want this poll, I want a different poll. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so this poll is called sleep. And here we go. So what are the benefits of getting a good night's sleep? Love it. Okay, 91% have voted. So I am going to end the polling and share the results. Excellent. Okay, all of the above. So, so this is so critical to our brain functioning, right? Modern life in the industrialized nation really entails long hours, bright lights, um, caffeine, all sorts of things that can impact uh, the quality of our sleep. And what happens is quite often we sacrifice our sleep in the name of productivity, right? And ironically, that loss of sleep negatively impacts our productivity. One of the, the better pieces of literature here is the book, Why We Sleep. And it's done by a neuroscientist out of UC Berkeley, written by a neuroscience scientist out, out of UC Berkeley. And in there, he really speaks to how sleep facilitates memory, creativity, problem solving, how it facilitates our immune capabilities. And if you are um, not getting consistently seven to nine hours of sleep per night, every night, you're adversely impacting not only productivity, but also your long-term um, probability of heart disease, dementia, diabetes. So there, there's a long-term impact there. Um, what are, and I know, I, I just want to hear a couple suggestions as far as what do people do to support getting good quality sleep? Because there's some really rich tips on what you can do to support yourself in this arena. Well, I'm proud of the fact that I get a lot of sleep every night. <laughs> I'm down routine. Love it, Lori. Oh, I got to reach up to see. Dark, cooler room, sp spray lavender on my pillow, unplug an hour before regular scheduled bedtime, no technology, blissy pillowcases. Go, I go to bed at the same time and reserve time every night for reading 30 minutes beforehand. No reading or watching TV in the bedroom. Use sleep meditation when I go to bed or wake up at midnight. Okay, so all really great, right? Really um, important to get away from the blue light of your technology. Of, a lot of us now in our homes have those really bright LED lights. 
try and move away from that a minimum of an hour ahead of time and start taking your, um, bringing calmness, reading, music, things that aren't overstimulating for your, your mind. Gratitude, journal, uh, wins, et cetera. So no TVs, great tips here, no alcohol, et cetera. So you guys are on it with this. I just want to acknowledge that. All right. Yeah, and I'm going to try to save the chat. We're in webinar mode. I know you guys can't save it, but I'm going to try to save it just to make sure that um, we all have access to it. And that way, any one of you that wants it, because we've got some really, really great comments here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another key area is around emotional awareness. Um, when you think about emotional awareness, we all experience moments or situations that where we are triggered, right? So when we have those situations, if we do not have a high level of emotional awareness, then we can act in a very narrow way and it can actually impact our resilience because our confidence goes down with a lack of sense of control. One of the key areas here is um, knowing the triggers that ignite an emotional hijack in your brain and having a plan to take back control is really, really important. When you are in a moment where you have been triggered, some of us, most of us have a level of awareness. We have a sensation in our body, right? We might notice a tenseness. We might notice that we're breathing very shallow. If we pay attention to that and then also pay attention to what is the emotion, we can start labeling it and managing it for ourselves. Quite often we end up in the sort of judge mode, judging ourselves. We might be self-critical. We might judge another person. We might judge a situation um, or the environment. And by recognizing what's going on, it enables us to step back. One really key way of doing that is to take a couple deep breaths. Some of you are probably in the positive intelligence because uh, I see the book in the background for Nahid. And of course, many of you have probably done some um, deep work around emotional intelligence. So this is all related to that. What I'd like to do is do one more poll here. Uh, and this would be the next poll, Nahid. And to have you take a look at what situations have you experienced a, a amygdala hijacked in? And I'm giving you a couple here, and these are actually based on work by Daniel Goldman. So we're getting a lot of votes here. Participation, keep going. We got about 33%, 50%. This one's multiple choice, guys. So you get to write, check everything off. <laughs> just need a few more people to vote. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the polling and share the results. This is what we got. Ah, there we go. Okay. So 58% have had an experience across all of these, right? Being treated unfairly, not being shown respect, being unappreciated, feeling that you're not listened to or being heard. 26% there, being pressured by unrealistic expectations. So when you think about, about this, what is at the core for you? Jot your thought or your response to that. 
So, so what's at the core here? Disrespect. I'm going to put feeling threatened. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have thoughts? Not good enough, feeling not good enough. Yeah, not worthy. Safety has been violated, not being valued, respected, not loved, vulnerability. <laughs> And, and one of these, not knowing, not knowing, owning my power, right? Feeling. Feeling like failure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Feeling our identities challenged, taking things personally. That's a good one. Yep. Yep. They're all great, great responses. So, so quite often at the core, there's a need or a value that's being kind of, um, compromised, if you will, that's being challenged. What are some tactics that you use to move past that trigger moment? Again, in the chat, five deep breaths. Yes, breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> Give it time. When one of your needs or values are being challenged, how do you get yourself through? Thank you for putting the question in. Without judgment of self and other, splash water on my face and hands, connect with my captain, talk to myself, empathy, right? Practice empathy. Hug a tree. Hug a tree, I love it. Yeah, go to a safe place, take a walk, exercise. Don't take it personally all really great really really great so getting more oxygen right into your system whether it's through breathing exercise etc taking a couple deep breaths down into your belly calms your nervous system really really one of the key pieces labeling your emotion really kind of figuring out what is it that i am feeling giving at, it gives you access to more of your prefrontal cortex um and noticing even if you say someone in there said talking to myself right so if you say to yourself i'm noticing i'm feeling really pissed off or frustrated that also helps to provide some distance and the ability to um, not only experience emotional awareness, but have a broader perspective and the opportunity to make a different choice. Focus on fact versus the story, right? And find time to engage in something different. Wonderful. Um, and most of the blanks I am, you'll see the responses typically in when the yellow banner comes up at the bottom. The other piece that is really important here is, see if I can get self-compassion, right? Taking a moment of self-compassion can change your entire day. This is one of my favorite um, graphics. And in, in the situation where we are experiencing being socially distant from others, it can be really difficult, right? We're missing, some of us are missing our hugs or um, we may not have a pet, for example. Um, we can go out and hug a tree. Another tactic for self-compassion, self uh, Kristen Neff has done a lot of research in this area. And it's to just, you know, kind of give yourself a hug, if you will, a virtual, not even virtual, or to rub your hand, it has a very soothing um, component to it. And very, very important to have self-empathy and to have self-compassion, right? So emotional awareness, we've got our little takeaway nugget there. 
All right, so let me move my pictures to the other side. So what do feelings have to do with resilience? Just a couple comments. What do feelings have to do with resilience? They can lie, they can to, lie you. to you. That's a good mm. Has everything to do with resilience. Thoughts impact feelings, which impacts choices. Absolutely, Rachel. Could lead, whoop, that went up really fast. They give you tunnel vision so you can't see solutions. In some cases, they do that. In other cases, it can be broad, right? If, if you're feeling really resilient, um, you might have a much broader perspective. And if you're not feeling resilient or the feelings are um, feelings of overwhelm or anxiety, et cetera, it can really cause a narrowing. Justifications, they're deceptive and change frequently. Everything, feelings and thoughts can either give us fuel to get us through challenges or drain us even more. Easier to discharge anger, blame, then heal or change. It can raise awareness on where we are feeling resilient or where we need to build, build resilience. So I'm curious <clears throat> also, on average, just put a number in, how many feelings do you experience, let's say in, in a week or in two weeks period of time? Wow, I wouldn't even know what number that is for me. <laughs> A thousand, a thousand, a hundred, <laughs> a hundred, millions, tens of thousands, millions, <laughs> lots and, of and lots. lots and lots. <laughs> Would you be able to label them 50, 750 with or without COVID? With yeah, without right, COVID. right, yeah, 60,000 yeah. per day. Wow, <laughs> there's an engineer out there somewhere. <laughs> okay. So what I want to share with you is quite often, and I think coaches are, are unique in a lot of ways in that uh, we have a broader, I believe, we have a broader spectrum um, and access to more emotions. Quite often, our clients really have a, a narrower um, focus uh, or access to their emotions. And part of our job is to help them expand that and to label what they're really feeling. Some of the emotions um, that you've experienced in the last week, originally I was gonna do this as an annotate, so we don't have that capability. But what I want to share is how important it is when, you, when we are working with a client who perhaps says, you know, I'm, I'm angry and my team is angry, right? So this is an example from some of um, Susan, da Susan David's work around emotional agility, excellent researcher. Helping them kind of get down to the granularity and label it so that they can see what the distinctions, we can see what the distinctions are for us and our clients can see what the distinctions are for them rather than having one broad label like, I'm just so stressed. Well, what, what is that? What's underlying that? All right, another domain is active problem solving. Often people feel stuck because they don't see any alternative. And if you notice that you are ruminating or um, you have negative, uh, recurring negative thinking, often about things that are not in your control. And quite frankly, most things are not within our control, right? We think they are. Um, the, the biggest thing that is within our control is how we respond to something. So our brain is, is a, a magical, a magical thing. And the important piece that we wanna focus on when we are working on active problem solving is what are the things that are within that circle of influence or that circle of control. And, and Zinger Fulman did some research around how important it is 
to really help people focus on what's within our control in order to open ourselves up to seeing and understanding alternative options. And people who focus their energy on constructive problem solving basically can actually control things that they can actually control tend to recover more quickly and have a higher level of resilience. So it's not about setting a lofty goal. It's more about selecting one or two priorities, right? One or two priorities. And digging in on those. What, what could you ask yourself to tell the difference between um, whether you're in active problem solving mode or whether you're actually in sort of a spin mode? What, what's one or two ideas on that? I just typed the question in for people. Oh, thank you. You know, I know for me, it's the feeling. So for me, I tend to feel um, overwhelmed and my mind is um, keeps changing my mind. So right. I'll have one thought, then another thought, then another thought, then another thought. Um, so that's how I tell. Also comments, anxiety, ruminating is a sign that I'm in spin mode. That mm -hmm. makes sense, Wendy and Carrie. Spin mode is negative and limited. Yeah. More rigid and spin on some things. Yep. Problem solving, clear focused. Spin is spinning mind. Yeah, I have that too. <laughs> we're, we're all in the same boat, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like the question, what can I do to positively impact this situation? That, that really kind of brings focus to it. Yes. Yes, thank you for that. I use a lot of the way, whoops, I started reading that and then it scrolled up. Let me kind of go back. I use a lot of the way we learned in coaching training on how to deal with ethical situations, the circle. Don't allow for the universe, yep. I see the million of reasons why it's not possible when I'm spinning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and one of the questions you can ask yourself is, am I focusing on some specific action I can take or um, something that is in fact out of my control. So making that distinction and then selecting from there. Yeah. Another one here, take a moment to check in on how I feel and what are my thoughts, even how I feel in my body. Do I feel tired, fearful, or excited and inspired? Ooh, I like that. Yes, that's great, Lucy. Not connected to my higher source, right? Have to do myself in, in spin mode. Or I, I love that. I can just imagine that. Like being connected to a higher source, you don't feel so all alone. But when you're in spin mode, you just feel completely alone. Yeah. Great. Okay. So focus on what is within your control. Chunk it down and just go with one or two priorities. All right, another piece. And this one, we're gonna try something a little bit different. We're not sure if it's gonna work. We might just have to rely on chat. Um, but what I'd like you to do is in chat, respond with just in a couple words, what gives your life meaning and purpose? And we're gonna see if we can annotate um, around the white space here to capture the gist of this. Okie dokie. Um, which value, so, so your values, right? Connection. I'll see if I can do this. We get to t test out our spelling here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even looking at my spelling. I'm just typing, typing, typing. And I'm getting maybe one of every three of these comments. Um,
So I can see yours. I don't know if people can see mine or not. We can so, now. There we go. Now we <laughs> Thank you for that. <clears throat> So, so a, a wide spectrum here, right? <clears throat> Using our talents, our grandkids, connection, own growth, legacy, um, a lot of different pieces. Let me clear that so I can progress. So quite often, there's a big component with regards to what really makes my heart sing, right? Is, is it um, connecting with others, volunteering, family, et cetera? And given someone actually spoke about Brene Brown right here, I, what I bring in is, is at the core, it's some important value. It's something that's really meaningful that is anchored in a value that we hold dear. And it's so important for us to realize that that by turning into that meaning and purpose, that helps enrich and um, reinforce our resilience, our sense of fulfillment, and our, our capability to move through whatever the challenge or setback is at that particular point in time. The next area is social support, right? So on this one, just take a moment and just in your mind, think about someone who you've had a really meaningful conversation with. And what I'd like you to do is reflect on what did they do that made that conversation feel really rich and pop just a couple of those responses in the chat. What did they do? They listened. Asked questions, helped me feel seen and understood. They empathized. They actively listened and reflected. They championed me, validated me, asked questions while holding a sacred space, gave the gift of time and space. All just beautiful pieces around the importance of connection, right? Listen without judge, judging. So one of the key pieces here around social support is the benefits far outweigh the um, time and it's it's really about how can we be present with people in the moment to really enable them to feel seen to feel heard and the the research here there's a, a book called compassionomics um, where there's a lot of research on how lack of connection how uh, increased loneliness, et cetera, can contribute to death, right? So it's so important for us to have connection. It, it impacts our physical well-being, our mental well-being, and has so many benefits that are critical to us. So I just, I just want to this is an area for me. My mom um, took a spell and was on the floor for three days in her home, unable to get to the phone. And it just pivoted. I mean, that was a huge setback for me. Um, but that this whole piece around how can we actually reach out in whatever fashion in order to embrace people and it supports their, their ability to thrive as well as our ability to thrive. So I'm being cognizant of the time here. Um, the next area is maintaining a positive outlook. And this particular area is critical to effectiveness and emotional balance as well as being a key factor in resilience. 
And again, uh, at least in the Zinger Folkman uh, literature, they speak to the importance of having more positive messages, especially during these times where we're working from home, we're socially distanced, et cetera. And it's a three to one ratio that for every potentially negative or off-putting um, comment or even self thought, we need to look at what are the positive things that are happening in our lives, right? And this is one of my favorite, the second favorite um, graphics because the reality is the heaviest burdens that we carry are the thoughts in our head. I mean, a huge piece to be aware of, like who is, who, what messages are we giving to ourselves? What messages are we giving to others? Unfortunately, as human beings, we tend to focus on the negative. And what we really want to do, and that's because we're wired that way, what we really want to do is to balance, rebalance that and have a more positive outlook. Someone spoke to gratitude earlier the, in a gratitude journal. That is one of the areas um, that can be very, very helpful in offsetting um, the negative things that we might encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. Emotions shape our reality. Positive outlook is really important amid challenges. Any, any comments popping up in, in chat there before I go to our last kind of domain here? No, I think we're good. Actually, I have two more domains, right? Sense of humor. <laughs> so, so sense of humor actually is a great coping mechanism um, with regards to resilience. What's, what's a couple things that you do to bring humor into your life, Nahid, or others? Well, I, I'm, I'm laughing at the cartoon here. So. <laughs> But I'm also laughing at our situation. You guys who are here probably don't know, but we had so many surprise technical things happen to us as we were preparing for this session. Um, one of it was that, oh my gosh, we're in webinar mode. We're not in meeting mode, which is what we had planned. We had planned to put you all in breakout rooms and stuff. So we were pivoting up to the last minute and then Michael's computer broke up, blew up <laughs> at the last minute too. So it was just very funny. But we were laughing. And I think the laughter really Kind of helped us come together and decide that we were going to make this fun no matter what and i feel like we did i love what's coming up in the chat yeah so um, so look looking at my, at my twitter, twitter feed that i put out laughing out loud um all the those glitches happen because you were focusing on resilience right Re resilience in action yeah. so so a couple other things that people quite often will um will share is is for me, it's I'm totally amused by my dog because um, he has this yoga move that I I can't even do it, and and it's and then, you know I I mentioned he eats tennis balls. Well, I got him a big huge horse ball, and so he, when he carries that around, I'm, so anything that can bring a sense of humor, a smile to your face, a chuckle, those are all really. Um, fun things to do and it's a it's a great coping mechanism. Okay, so my last key area is adaptability. So on that, the original um, wheel that I shared, I had the field other. The master skill from an EI, from an emotional intelligence perspective <clears throat> is this idea of adaptability. And if you think about why do people resist change? right? Generally, it's because they are afraid of loss. And, and many of you probably have other examples, but generally, it could be loss of something like um, someone lost uh, family members, they lost a, a beloved pet. It could also be loss of a job, right? You, there were a number of different types of challenges and setbacks that, that you shared earlier. Being adaptable, in my mind, is kind of like um, bending with the wind and really looking towards what are the 
potential opportunities here? What's the learning here, right? And it, Wendy has in here, and yet there is loss with every change, whether positive or negative, even positive change involves loss, right? So right on there. The, the one thing to be aware of if you are experiencing overwork and exhaustion, it does not build resilience. The longer we tough it out does not equate to becoming tougher. So it's, it's really about how do we adapt. And so this is my little cartoon here before I give you your last piece. Let me let you read that part. <laughs> Right. Did you say you needed me to launch a poll? I was reading the cartoon again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the punchline. Um, no, um, basically, I would ask another question here, but but I'm just going to move us on because we only have a few minutes left. So adaptability yeah. helps us shift gears, right? So everything has a potential opportunity. It's a matter of the lens we look at it through. So what I'd like you to do in the couple minutes before I hand it totally back is reflect on this question. Finish this sentence. <clears throat> when you're thinking about your resilience and what you might want to do, what might the wisest, most loving person you know advise you to do? And then what will you actually do? You might continue doing something. You might start doing something. You might stop doing something. Develop yourself a little action plan. And we'll take a couple. We'll let you kind of pop those into the chat. And then I'll give it back to Nahid. Downshift a gear. Consciously refuse to put pressure on myself. Sage perspective. Yeah, this one's taking a little bit more time for people to think of, huh? Yeah. Listen to myself and follow my intuition. Give myself grace. Take a break now. Love that. Mm -hmm. Super important to, like when we're on, on technology like this for extended periods of time, at a minimum every 90 minutes to take a break. Um, and, and even to look distance and close, just to also give your eyeballs a break. More self-care. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw Ask the Universe why I'm getting, getting this challenge. What's, what, what am I, what is it there to strengthen or teach me? I didn't use the exact words because the, the, okay. the chat it, box it, rolled up so quickly. So quickly okay embrace sleeping. adaptability. Be okay with sleeping. Yes. Actually, that will, it, I, you don't want to oversleep. I mean, there is something about if you go beyond the nine hours. Um, but creativity, problem solving, rejuvenation, immune system, there's a, it's like, it's almost like a super pill. <laughs> Take a nap. There we go. Check in with others who I trust to get a reality check. Yeah, that social connection and, and a trusted advisor. Thank like you, everyone. In others huh? Yeah. Believe in others' resilience and take the hard talk anyway. Um, you know, I really love that. That's been helpful for me is, is not jumping in and trying to people please everybody else. Right. And, and someone, um, and it might have been you, Nahid, said, uh, take the sage perspective, right? So that is the sage perspective is really about um, accessing that higher level thinking and, and what is the gift or opportunity in the, in Shirzad's language, if you will, for those that are reading his book or doing his work. Checking in with myself, taking Excellent. breaks. So I don't break, eating well, sleeping enough, respecting my needs. So a big piece around self-care and, and, and being consciously competent at self-care. Yeah. All right. Well, we're All getting right. to the 
hour. And I want to thank you so much, Carmen. I'm going to hand it over to Michael. But while Michael kind of shares a little bit about a wrap up, two things, we are going to give you Carmen's contact information when we send out the surveys afterwards. So you should feel welcome to reach out to her just if there was any extra questions or you want to thank her personally. Meanwhile, what I would love, it's kind of a tradition we have here for people to do gems, kind of what is the most valuable thing I got out of the session afterwards. So if you guys can share that in the chat while Michael is um, wrapping us up, then I promise that I will save the chat before turning it off today. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Thank you, Nahi. Thank you so much, Carmen, for um, for being with us today, for sharing your experience and, and your knowledge with us, as well as your wisdom. A couple of the gems for me, um, exhaustion does not build resilience. And um, I have many, many decades of experience thinking that exhaustion gets makes me more productive and it does not. And so thank you for reminding me of that today and sharing that. And also that idea of just getting more oxygen in my system. I mean, just very simple but profound things, Carmen. So thank you so much for that. Um, and of course, thank you on behalf of the chapter and all the attendees today. I'm sure they're typing many excellent things in the chat for you. Uh, just as a reminder to everyone, there's a few upcoming events. Um, our book club is this Thursday, March 11th, and one of our speakers from last month, uh, Michael Bungay Stainier, his book, The Advice Trap, will be part of the book club. So we would love you to join us during that uh, activity if you would like. Um, then on Thursday, March 18th, we have a virtual um, chapter meeting, and we'll have um, Tina Mertel and Pam Noda join us. And uh, it's the title of that is Relational Presence for Coaches. And they're going to provide a very interactive space that's both safe and highly interactive. So that'll be an excellent event. And um, there's some uh, CCEUs involved in that one as well. So we would love you to be a part of that. And then finally in March, um, it's a busy month, we'll uh, have another virtual meeting on uh, Tuesday, March 23rd at 11 a.m. And that's how to stay connected in a disconnected world. So you can see we're kind of have a theme one year into <laughs> lockdown mode this month. And uh, we just would love to see you at each of those events. And um, thank you again, Carmen. Thank you, Nahid, for co-hosting and doing all the work. And um, and we appreciate you all and would look forward to seeing you uh, later on this month. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Carmen, you got some great comments here. So I don't know if you could save the chat yourself, but I just saved it as well. I have so. no idea. <laughs> <laughs> There's three dots at the bottom, so you can just save it. Everyone's ah, saying thank you. Great session. It. Thank you, Carmen lots of hearts and everything like that. So I want to make sure that you got all those because we didn't have time to share it above. I thought that went well. What do you think, Michael? Yeah, excellent, Carmen. Thanks for working with the confusion over webinar. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all the support. And it, it helped to have someone to act that I could actually see 